All right. Hello, Dr. Gail Clayton. We're so happy to have you here on Raw Fork Podcast. Hi, Marina. Thanks for having me. So I'd like you to tell the audience in your own words just a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what brought you onto this pharmacy slash functional medicine path. Well, I, I'm from Houston, Texas, and, and, my, and my office is based here, but I'm not limited to seeing people just in Houston. I do a lot of remote consults with clients all over the world. And I found this path of functional medicine slash pharmacy um, the same way that everybody that that's a practitioner that finds functional medicine, they start getting sick themselves and they realize that conventional medicine does a really poor job in, in helping uh, people that have chronic illness, fatigue, pain all over, night sweats, all these, you know, crazy things going on. To actually fix it okay so um, I jumped into looking for answers and it took me a long time you know it actually took me seven years to figure out what was wrong because I had no skills uh, outside of the conventional world to actually look for the root cause and then once I figured out what would the, the cause was um, conventional medicine had no answer <laughs> I mean the answer was nutrition and um, so I kind of started studying nutrition and then I met this wonderful lady who had a PhD in nutrition because I needed some, I had some gut issues. I went to her for colonics thinking, okay, that's going to fix everything. And she and I became instant friends and she encouraged me to go back to school. You know, I thought I was too old, um, you know, but you know, there was just something nagging at me. I just could not do it. Uh, so at age 57, I started back uh, in for a master's degree in nutrition. And then when I finished that, I'm like, that's not enough. And so I went um, and got a doctorate in nutrition. And I didn't wait to, to get started doing this because, you know, as a pharmacist, we already have a lot of training. And so my first semester, I was already out there helping people, getting my myself out there, making a lot of noise on social media. And so by the end of my first year, I already, you know, had some, my first year of, of my master's program, I already had some clients. And so um, it just kind of blossomed from there. That's wonderful. I know you also had uh, some interesting traveling where you were working in Mexico and you got some more trainings over the years. Could you tell us all about that? Yeah. So when I was sick, I, de I developed um, uh, hypersensitivities to a lot of things. I was uh, became very sensitive to foods and, and um, indoor air. Um, I, there was a lot of buildings and homes that I couldn't even walk into because my, the, my, uh, my immune system and, and my lungs were just overreactive and I would just have a really hard time and get really sick. And so I researched and found this community that was in Mexico in the mountains where the, that nobody had air conditioner heating and it was like almost perfect weather all year long, no humidity. And so I went and I visited and I actually went and visited four times and each time I stayed longer and longer. And um, at the time I was doing remote pharmacy from home and I was like, you know, I can just do this from anywhere. And so I just packed up and I moved down there to a, a Lake Chapala, just south of Guadalajara. And that's where I met Dr. B, who was the nutritionist. But, you know, it was funny, you know, I worked night shift and and I had a big view of the lake and, you know, the nurses are talking to me and, um, you know, they had no idea that I'm in Mexico with this beautiful view <laughs> of the mountains and the lake. And I just kind of acted like I was in the basement of an office somewhere in downtown <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah, and I lived there for a couple of years, and then this, you know, when I decided I was going to go back to school, I'm, I moved back to, and um, so here I am. Wow. So your pharmacy school was also in Texas? Yeah, I went to University of Houston. I graduated in 1988. 
Wow. And then, so what did you do right after that? Did you go into hospital pharmacy or? No, the very first thing I did, I, my first job was at Kroger, a grocery store chain. I don't know if it's all over the U.S., but um, I worked there four months. And then I, I changed to, and I went to a chain that's now no longer, it was called Farmore. It was a very busy um, chain. I worked there for a couple of years. And then I moved into HMO Pharmacy. You know, I, you know, the thing about pharmacy for me is I got tired of it very quickly every job it was like as soon as I learned it it was it was just repetitive same thing over and over Absolutely. and over and you know within four months of working at Kroger I'm like oh my god I can't do this anymore and even the first day I'm like this sucks the <laughs> very first day of my job I'm like you know this this kind of sucks I felt like I was working at jack-in-the-box you know just cranking yeah. them out and, and then um and so then after five years uh, total, then I'm like, I just can't even do this anymore. I, I did HMO, I did retail, I worked in the grocery store, I worked at all of these places and I'm like, I can't do it. And so then I switched to community hospital and I loved it. Uh, you know, I did that for three years and then I went downtown to the med center and I worked in uh, one of the non big, big, huge uh, hospitals in, in the Texas Medical Center, and I did that for 11 years. Um, you know, even that got boring. I would, like, transfer from one area to the other. You know, they have all these different types of jobs you can do, and, you know, work in cardiac, work in ICU, work in CV recovery, work in uh, uh, central pharmacy, working in the IV room. And so I, it, when I got tired of something, I would just, like, you know, switch to another area. But after 11 years, I just like, I'm like, okay, I'm done. And uh, then I, uh, I actually worked uh, home infusion for a while, and I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but uh, and then that's when I left. I started doing home, um, you know, remote from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's when I like realized I can move to Mexico. So a year later, I moved to Mexico, and so here I am. Wow. So it sounds like you're truly a lifelong learner. You're yeah. Always learning, always moving on. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm totally done with pharmacy, actually. I haven't worked um, in, in an actual pharmacy in three years. And, um, you know, at first it was kind of scary. I was working at a little small hospital here, just part-time, and uh, they went bankrupt, and one day they said, call me up and say, we, you know, come get your stuff. The hospital's closing tomorrow. <laughs> and I was, like, terrified. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't have a job. You know, I don't have, like, a steady income coming in, and um, and I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I didn't think my business was enough to be sustainable, but... And, and then there aren't that there weren't that many all of a sudden all the pharmacy jobs just kind of dried up and um, there weren't any and yeah. uh, you know so then I had a lot of fear but then I just I had to throw that fear out and just started you know telling myself I'm following the path I'm supposed to go and just believe just believe in the choices believe that the universe is going to open up and um, and I was in, I was in my, I think my doctorate program or just starting the doctorate. I don't know when that happened. And, um, you know, so I just like didn't pay attention. I had some money in savings. I'm like, okay, I have enough to get through to my doctorate program. You know, I may have, I have a little bit coming in from other sources from, you know, the few consults I was doing. Um, and so, and it felt so good not to have to go into a pharmacy anymore, honestly. So wow. now I don't have any fear at all. You know, um, I think in 2018, I made about the same amount working a, as a functional medicine in my own practice as I did a pharmacist. And I had all this freedom, you know, and I only saw a few clients a month and, and um, was able to figure out how to get income streams from different ways so when you're working as a practitioner on your own you can't just rely on um on 
money from from paid consults not like you do when you work in a job and you know you're getting paid per hour right you have to realize that you know you have to make some webinars and you have to do this and you have you know get get money streams coming in from different sources so can you walk us through how you completed all the additional post pharmacy school training and then transitioned into your full time functional medicine practice? Well, um, you know, I started at University of Bridgeport and when I finished the when I fr finished my master's degree at University of Bridgeport, the next step was to take the CNS exam. And um, I had already done a whole bunch of uh, internship hours with Dr. B in Mexico and that counted towards it. So um, as soon as I finished my, my, my Bridgeport master's program, the next semester I was already enrolled in the doctorate at, at MUIH, Maryland University of Integrative Health. And both of them are online. And so, you know, it's it's not self-paced, but it is like you, you do it from home and then they have lectures and they're embedded and every week they open up a module and you have the whole week to complete all of the assignments and readings for that uh, week. And so that makes it really doable. I don't think that, before, you know, I could have done this before the Internet. I, I mean, I couldn't have, like, I would never have just up and moved to Connecticut to go and get it or, or move to Maryland, you know, uh, it's the, but it, so it made it doable. And we had students from all over the world in our, in our program and, uh, and from all different backgrounds. So, you know, each week when the module would open up, it, you're required to participate in the discussion board. So you would have to write like a 300 to 500 word essay over the readings or the lecture or something stimulating and post it. And then everybody posts their, their topic and then you have to respond to your classmates. Mm -hmm. and, and so you basically are teaching each other. Of course you have the lecture, the main lecture, but then the questions are usually pretty thought for provoking that, that they mm -hmm. ask for you to participate on the discussion board. And it was really uh, amazing how much you learn just from each other and, and uh, doing your research and, and stuff. So um, the fact that it was self-paced and so anybody that is working, uh, you, you don't have to be present at like Monday morning at 9 a.m. for a live lecture. You know, everything's recorded and, and, and put in there. So it makes it makes it really nice. So no matter what time zone or where you are, you could um, <clears throat> do the program. That's awesome. So how did so you didn't have to move? That's that answered one of my questions. How did you become an expert that you now specialize in organic acid testing and interpretation? How did that all come about? Well, it's really, I'm kind of a self-proclaimed expert <laughs> because, uh, no okay. well, the thing is, is when I got into the biochemistry at the University of Bridgeport, and the University of Bridgeport is known for their really intense biochemistry uh, program, and I think it's a really good program for pharmacists because we have a lot of chemistry background as it is, right? Mm -hmm. And the, <clears throat> the entrance requirements are actually a little bit lax. You know, they, they require one semester of chemistry before entering the, the program, and it's an intro that includes <clears throat> inorganic, organic, all you know, two years all in just in one semester is just basically an introductory to concepts. And so as pharmacists, as much chemistry as we had, I got in there and then I was so amazed at <clears throat> what I wasn't taught in biochem at, at, at University of Houston. And I was actually very angry that I'm like, Oh my God, they had us like measure, memorizing stupid chemical structures. You know, like we had one one hour lecture on vitamins and basically all it was is thiamine is B1 and it causes beriberi as a deficiency. Yep. Mem memorize this chemical structure and then memorize the structure of B12. I'm like, who gives a 
crap what the structure B12 looks like. In my biochem course that I teach, um, I don't require anybody to memorize any structures. I want them to understand the function. And what happens in the biochemistry on a molecular level, when you which pathway is B1 used in, and what are you going to see clinically, and what are you going to see on the labs, and then show them exactly in the pathway where it's used, and and like okay, this path pathway is blocked because we don't have B1. So then I say, okay, well, what do you think that's going to manifest as chemically? I mean, physically and clinically because you see that that pathway is not blocked and you know what the end results of this pathway is, what we're making. So how is that going to manifest? And then so we have a big discussion about that. So um, <clears throat> and then the advanced clinical biochem and the functional medicine and the organic acids, I found it so intriguing um, that I spent massive amount of time. I spent so much more time than that what was required because I realized how important that was and I to understand the detail and then connect them all together. And, um, you know, so even after I finished all three levels of the chemistry classes, I spent a whole nother year on my own studying the literature, just trying to figure out some of the patterns, these strange patterns, and what, you know, what, how it's, they're all connected. And, um, you know, and I realized that most people didn't even have the basic understanding. So, uh, you know, and I became quite popular on uh, social media as being the person that to go to if, if they had wanted an organic acid interpretation. There, everybody kind of knows it now, like, oh, go to Gail, because if they have organic acid, they're like, go see Gail. It doesn't matter what health group they're in, they're all talking about my acid, my, my skills and in, in interpretation of organic acids. So for people who don't know much about the testing, could you tell us a little bit about what types of clients usually seek uh, a reading and what kind of illnesses it's really helpful in interpreting? Yeah, um, so organic acid testing isn't really first line, you know, just the com all the conventional labs ruling out this and that, <clears throat> and looking at diet, looking at all their lifestyle, uh, removing all the triggers, and, um, <clears throat> but for people that are chronically sick and, and kids with on the autism spectrum, ADD, ADHD, it's really helpful. Any autoimmune disease, it's helpful. Um, and uh, and people that have a lot of skin issues, you know, I like to use the NutraVal by Genova because it has the whole fatty acid portion. I want to see what their, what, you know, what their fatty acids are doing. And you can see the whole mitochondria marker, all the con mitochondria markers. You can see how amino acids are metabolized. They, there's, you know, the list of all the amino acids and the pattern, different patterns mean different things. So it can tell me a lot about what's going on inside the cell metabolically rather than, you know, you can go to a lab and just have your, your, uh, vitamin levels drawn and they're just saying okay you have your b6 is is high your b5 is here this is how much b1 you have this is how much b2 you have but in and how much you know your serum b12 is is high or whatever but it doesn't tell you if those nutrients are actually getting in the cell and being used for mm. the enzymes because everybody's enzymes has a different speed you know enzymes work enzymes use these vitamins and minerals as cofactors and they convert one thing to the next down the long mm. chain to get to a final product so <clears throat> if you have some kind of genetic issue with one of the enzymes where it's just like really lazy and slow just because you have, you know, a, an adequate B1 blood level doesn't mean it's enough to make that enzyme work fast. So you can manipulate speeds of enzymes with targeted nutrients as its cofactors. So when you flood the set, flood the enzyme with its substrate, it kicks up and starts going really fast. So then you can normalize a, a pathway. You can normalize mm -hmm. a pattern. So. It's really good at detecting um, genetic uh, anomalies and, and metabolism.
and that you know so some people really really need that that and also um, optimizing energy function because it has all the mitochondria intermediate markers and <clears throat> depending on the pattern can tell us what's going on with the mitochondria and what nutrient I need to target it. So is it difficult to order the test and to collect the specimen? Well, I have a medical director um, that uh, has signed for me to have an account with Genova. And uh, I think in some states, um, you, it depends on your state as to whether you're allowed to have a, an account with them or not. Um, but it's, you know, you could probably find a medical director to sign. Um, <clears throat> there are some, are some direct to consumer lab companies like, um, what's it called, DH, DHA Labs is a direct to consumer lab that you can order, you know, get your client to order all of those directly through them. Um, um, and then there's some other labs that do some um, organic acid testing that I think they allow pharmacists anywhere to order. Uh, maybe it's the Dutch by uh, Dutch Labs, or I think it's their their name is Precision Labs. Um, <clears throat> and then you can order conventional labs through Principal Labs. Um, I think that they let just about anybody have an account there and, and also uh, clients can go and order their labs from there directly and it's a direct to consumer lab company. Um, but I would recommend a pharmacist checking with their <clears throat> with any of those companies that they want to have um, an account with and, and to see if they let pharmacists in that state have, a, have an account and then um, you know perhaps network a lot, go to a lot of the networking events in, the, in your area, get, make friends with the, the doctors. And, uh, <laughs> because my current medical director, she's the one that contacted me. She said, girl, I want to collaborate with you. you know? <laughs> Cause she's, she's uh, been doing functional medicine, <clears throat> you know, through IFM. We kind of started our functional medicine training at the same time, but she's so busy with her insurance-based practice she has she hasn't even finished the the IFM modules and right. here I've like gone and gotten two degrees got my CNS and now I'm teaching and all of this she's like I want you on my team and I says okay well I need you to be my medical director and she's like no problem so uh, we kind of have a, a really nice um, um, agreement so uh, a little bit back to the organic acid testing. As far as I understand, it's a urine test, right? <clears throat> so is it a 24 hour collection or how does it work? Well, it's a, it's an overnight urine collection. You know, it's just basically your first morning urine. Okay. Um, and, um, if you wake up in the middle of the night to pee, then you pee in a cup, <clears throat> put it in the refrigerator. And then the first morning urine, you you collect it and then you pour it all together and then you just fill the test tubes and throw it in the freezer and call FedEx or, or, or whatever uh, to, to come and pick it up. Uh, you know, you freeze it and then you put everything in the prepaid label and then you can drop it off at FedEx or call them to come pick it up. And then you get the, the, the results in two weeks. Okay, awesome. So, uh, th thanks a lot about sharing about all of this, by the way, to people that, you know, want to follow your path and do something similar. <clears throat> uh, so, what are your current endeavors? I know you mentioned that you're teaching and that you're collaborating with a practitioner. So, how is that all working for you? Yeah, so I, I mean, I got hired by University of Bridgeport. Uh, before I even graduated with my doctorate, it was like three weeks before, and they're like, we need a biochem teacher, and uh, and I said, okay, I'll do it, and then I had no idea that I had to create everything, because the previous professor was not a nutritionist, and she had a PhD in, in biochem, and her lectures, it just didn't connect, didn't pull anything in together, and 
you know, I watched some of the lectures and I was in tears. I'm like, oh my God, I can't get through this lecture. So, but anyway, so I just, I just threw out everything that she had and I started from scratch and created the whole course. And I, so I was working 14 hours a day, you know, I was like, uh, all these, all these uh, students' lives are in my hands, you know, <laughs> you know, and uh, if you don't get that course, you're not going to progress very well through the rest. And so I put a lot of time and a lot of effort in making, and each semester I've improved it. So this is my third semester teaching. And, um, and it's really fun, you know, I think we all need to give back. You know, I've, I have all of this knowledge of all, everything I've studied, and it would be really a crime to not share that and give back. I think we all need to give back because my, my, my initial um, hope and dream and vision was to change the way that we approach chronic illness and disease. And I needed, I knew I needed to get a doctor. I knew I needed to teach doctors. I wanted to teach people how to actually approach chronic illness and disease. And so that's why I took the teaching job. It wasn't for the money because believe me, I'm at, but with the time I put in, it's about half minimum wage. <laughs> but but it, it's more of like giving back, doing what it, uh, sharing a lot of the things, a lot of the things that I've learned and my deep understanding of the biochemistry um, has led me to come to a whole bunch of clinical pearls. So I teach them like, you know, what I real, you know, kind of like realize that's not in a book anywhere, uh, you know, wow. and just just things that I've, I've kind of like decided, you know, and just say like, okay, so this person has cancer, and why would you not give ribose, or why would you not give B1 or B6? Think about cancer. It's a rapidly dividing cell, right? And it, you, these are the nutrients it uses. How is this going to impact that rapidly dividing cell? How do we starve it, and how do we, how do we block that cancer pathway mm -hmm. with nutrition? And um, so what nutrients would you not want to give? And those kind of things. Or, you know, how, what, what you're going to see clinically when a pathway, a certain metabolic pathway isn't working well. Um, so those are the things that I think is important. And, um, <clears throat> you know, and that organic acids is such a fabulous tool and hardly anybody understands how to actually um, implement it properly. And so I've kind of taken it on myself to be that person to uh, hopefully eventually take it out to all practitioners, all nutritionists, all pharmacists, all doctors, and um, make it available. Yeah, that was uh, my next question, actually, if there's any plans to separate the teachings that you do for the school and kind of integrate it all into another package that could be purchased separately by practitioners wanting to learn it. Yeah, that's something in the future, you know, um, it's not going to be this year or next year, but I think, you know, maybe three or four years down the road because I'm teaching the first biochem course right now, and then this summer I'm teaching, going to start teaching the advanced clinical biochem course, and of course teaching it is how I get really good at it. And then next year I'll be teach, helping Dr. Lord teach the uh, functional medicine with all the functional labs. So once I have all those lectures, um, that's like 14 lectures in each course, that's, um, you know, like 40 something lectures, then I'll take the whole conglomeration and try to converge it and pull out what do we need, what do I need to teach um, doctors and nurses, nurse practitioners, pharmacists and nutritionists and dietitians how to understand the biochemistry behind the organic acids and what do they need to know and put it in a like a, a seminar type um, program to where I could just take it on the road. Very nice. Looking forward to that. Um, 
So another question I had was, I know you were involved in the mold, toxic mold summit or something like that. So could you tell us yes. a little bit about, about that? <clears throat> Yeah, that's another um, project of mine. I um, I uh, I met Dr. Christensen at a mold conference in Dallas, <clears throat> and I had already had in my mind that I wanted to create an online course that people can do on their own because it's so difficult to recover from toxic mold, and that was what was making me sick. And uh, so I have a real passion about it um, <clears throat> of, you know, at least just getting started. And she and she told me she was doing a toxic mold summit in a few months and, you know, one of those online health summits. <clears throat> and so we decided to pull forces together and she and her team helped me. Um, you know, we launched the first three modules on getting started. What do you do? And it's basically, you know. Uh, lowering your toxic load and changing your diet so that all your detox to prepare you so you can do some detox um, and so we launched the first three modules with the toxic mold summit last year and then um, she's repeating the toxic mold summit this summer and I've been working on a practitioner module explaining the whole immune what happens with the immune system with toxic mold illness because what happens is you basic you're you're basically become reactive to your environment chemicals very chemically sensitive sensitive to smells start developing a lot of food sensitivities and your whole immune system gets polarized in a direction and you get stuck in this loop even though you, you, once you get out of the the, the, the mold and even change your diet, your immune system gets polarized and, it, and it's impaired. So I have to, I'm, I'm explaining the whole thing, you know, like basic review of the immune system and the T cells and the B cells and then how, how it gets polarized and, and then <clears throat> um, how you can see what's going on with the immune system with, with just conventional labs and then um, how to fix it, you know, how, how you can modulate the immune system and get it back into homeostasis so you're not all reactive and, you know, histamines going off all over the places. And so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the project I'm working on now, and that will launch with uh, the new Toxic Mold Summit. She's going to be uh, have a lot more new interviews and, and um that's going to launch this summer. Well, awesome. I'll be on the lookout for that as well. Thank you for your work. Oh, you're welcome. I love it. I mean, it doesn't feel like work when you're following your passion. I get up every morning and I just can't wait to get started. And sometimes I'm real overwhelmed with, and I got this whole list to do list and I get a little bit anxious and overwhelmed. But, um, Honestly, if I didn't have a list of things to do, I'd wake up and not really know what to do with myself. Yeah, that's a good process. So I know you already shared a lot of pearls of advice for people that are looking for similar ways of practicing. <clears throat> uh, but could you tell us a little bit more about how you turned your uh, practice into like a high paying and sustainable practice? Well, um, I think the, 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 the most important thing is you have to really know what you're doing. Um, because, and the more education and credentials you have, then your, your clients, they, they, they work for you for free as marketers. <laughs> you know, those send 10 people. And if you're doing a, a poor job, if you don't have credentials, you don't have training, and all you're doing is selling them supplements, it shows. I mean, because you, unless you actually really make a difference um, and understand the physiology and, and the root causes behind, you know, the drivers, if you understand the drivers of what's going on with their illness, no matter what illness it is, then <clears throat> you can make a difference. And, you know, I've seen some pharmacists go out and 
uh, maybe they have an independent pharmacy and they're starting to do nutrition consultants and they're like all excited because they sold $500 worth of supplements. They have no training. You know, what do you think is going to happen when they they just like sold or selling supplements? And uh, some of them, uh, their sole source of training is um, watching videos on YouTube and watching, you know, the different supplement companies have some training videos and those are pretty good some of them have some really great training and um and protocols so you know if you don't have the money or or time or or haven't decided that you want to actually make the jump i would say at least get out there and start um, watching some of the training videos like uh, Vibrant Labs has some really good ones. Um, Genova, Great Plain Labs, the Dutch Labs uh, have like tons and tons of free videos. Probably hundreds of them from all the lab companies because they're trying to sell, get you to, to sell their labs. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, I would at least learn how, uh, you know, the pillars of functional medicine on how to actually review all of the systems to look for the triggers. You have to find the triggers and, um, and be able to, to make lifestyle diet changes and lab recommendations based on what you find. That's, that's foundational. But I think, you know, the reason why I'm, I'm, I've been so successful is, number one, I'm very passionate for, to, uh, about it. Um, I give a lot of information of free on my, uh, in my nutrition group. I started a Facebook group, and, you know, you get a following. You know, social media is great. You can just get a following and become, like, famous just by doing something on there, making a lot of noise. You know, so, you know, I, I, I would say the best way to get into it is find out what is your pain point what is it about you not just because that you say okay I'm sick of pharmacy and I don't want to do this anymore a lot of people most people get sick of pharmacy really quick and they don't want to do it anymore but you can't just like jump in and say oh I'm going to do functional medicine and I'll start making a lot of money you need to jump into functional medicine because you're hurting yourself and you're very passionate about finding out, you know, whatever it is, some, you know, like Dr. Isabella went, she, she did the whole thyroid thing and that's what drove her towards it. Um, and I don't know, Susie Cohen is another fancy name out there. I don't know if she's did any training, but she sure is good at marketing. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, Everybody, you know, every semester I have a, a webinar for my new students and, um, and I have them introduce themselves and tell me, tell me what got, got them into it. It's usually a family member had got cancer or this genetic disease runs in their family or they were sick themselves and, and got interested in nutrition. Almost everybody in functional medicine is in it because of their own personal experience. So find that pain point, that personal experience, and exploit it. Mm -hmm. And go, you know, find a niche. Join the Facebook groups, Instagram group, groups. I don't, I'm not even on Instagram. I don't know how it works. I can't barely keep up with Facebook. But, um, you know, find your, find your niche and make a lot of noise in that area and then use that as your springboard. Um, that's what I did. Oh. And, yeah. And then I kind of slowly, you know, branched out. And then uh, when I got, after I'd taken the, all of those chemistry courses at, at University of Bridgeport and I got good at the uh, organic acids, then I made a YouTube video, a couple of YouTube videos uh, over a couple of cases that I had. And then I explained what was going on with the organic acids. And I can't tell you how many people hired me because of those videos. They're like, wow, she knows what she's talking about. And um, so I, actually after I made those videos, I was able to quit one of my part-time pharmacist job. Yeah, I quit the one that I hated the most because it had... <laughs> 
Uh, you know, now in the hospitals, they have something, what do they call it? I don't know what it's called, but they have an interface with another computer program that every, all they have, they have all these, this queue of thing, work queue, and you, all you do is fix problems all day. I'm like, that is the part of pharmacy I absolutely hated, and now they made it my main job. <laughs> I hated that. Like, you had to go in, and you had to call the doctor, call the doctor, change this, change that. And it's all on the, and you walk in the morning, there's 150 things in your queue that you had to clear off your plate. And I just absolutely, honestly, I just hated that. I hated it. <laughs> You know, hated solving all the problems. I just want to go in and enter orders and do this and do that. And I don't want to be bothered but with, with all the problems because that's, it seemed like that's all they were. And they, I didn't even enter orders anymore because they had somebody remote at home, you know, doing that. They had this easy stuff. And any, if it's a problem, then they just put it in the queue. And that was my job to solve everybody's problem. And uh, so I quit that job really quick. <laughs> that was the first thing. Yeah. Well, now you problem solve in a different way that you enjoy. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, and I, uh, and I get to spend an hour, you know, I spend a lot of time reviewing. I have a lot of intake forms and, and uh, you know, I have a, a practice platform that I use. So everything's online and HIPAA compliant. And I have them fill out all those forms and I review everything. They upload their labs. So when we meet, we have a relaxing hour conversation about everything that's in their intake forms. I tell them everything they're doing wrong. You know, <laughs> that's really great if you're a control freak. You can say, okay, a perfectionist, you can say, okay, this is what you're doing wrong. And I want you to do this, this. <laughs> and then, uh, and, you know, so I, I, I give them a, a whole plan and it's all individualized. I don't have like a protocol that every, every blanket, you know, put everybody on. Um, and you know, I don't tell everybody to take the same supplements. It's like, let me figure out what's going on and then I'll make my recommendations based on that. So do you find, I mean, I would imagine that the diet and lifestyle things that you recommend for your clients is probably something they would have to follow for life. To well, the, the what, what I do, effects. most everybody, I have them start on an elimination diet, and I put together a whole program, and it was, uh, and I made videos and everything, and it's all in my practice portal. So I have all the handouts, recipes, and I made a video that's an hour and something long explaining the whole diet, all the ins and outs, what you can do, what not to do. You know, I have 20 handouts on what they can eat, you know, and then I have like a snack, you know, even a snack page. Okay, these are the things you can have on your snack. Because you got to remove all the food triggers because pretty much 80% of the time the inflammation in the body is going to be from food. And inflammation is the root cause of everything. So right. if you have not, like uh, never heard of that disease that your 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 client is coming with, like somebody came in with Goucher's disease, I'm like I don't know what that is, but let me find the inflammation, <laughs> and you know you, and and so you got to always start with food, water, air. Right. Okay. So you you have to look at okay, or what? How old is their house? Is there toxic mold? And are you breathing in mold toxins? Are they breathing in? Are they a smoker? Are they breathing in secondhand smoke? Are they working with chemicals? What are all your exposures? Because those are your triggers. And then, you know, where's your water supply? Are you drinking out of a well? Has it been tested? Are you drinking filtered water, delivered water, reverse osmosis water? Where, you know, so you want clean water and clean air. And then, of course, I have them do a three day diet history. Tell me what you eat. And then when they're doing that, I'm making a list of all of the foods that they're eating that are inflammatory, right. that's contributing to the problem. So the first thing I do is is I make recommendations to clean up their air, water, and 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 food. So pretty much everybody um, is going to be um, doing some some changes, some lifestyle stuff changing, and of course their stress level. You know how. Have, did you have a lot of um, adverse childhood events, you know, a stressful childhood, you know, 
most everybody does, <laughs> you know. So what are, what are you doing to relieve stress? Because stress, the stress chemistry really it plays a bigger role than anybody ever really dreams of, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, the, you know, I have a whole module that I share with them about, you know, working on reducing the stress and um, and changing, you know, uh, and resolving old traumas to lower the stress chemistry at baseline so it's not putting out cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine that's causing the mitochondria to, you know, go into its uh, defense mode. So we, you know, it's a whole systems approach. Right. So do you find yourself recommending or having to recommend a lot of supplements for any given patient and for how long would the course of treatment be with the supplements? Well, I do recommend supplements, but you know, you can't just throw supplements at a problem. You know, mm -hmm. first you have to figure out what the problem is. Some people need certain supplements for life and mm -hmm. but maybe not every day. You know, like I take supplements myself, but Honestly, I kind of get an aversion to taking supplements, and so I've, I've, I've reduced it. You know, so once you, you – the supplements at first may be a lot because i got to fix the gut. i got to kill all those pathogens. I do a gut healing protocol, kill the pathogen with, you know, herbs and essential oil, whatever I need, and then a gut healing, you know, some things that uh, – supplements to help heal the gut, and then – you know, repopulate the gut with probiotics, you know, but maybe that's going to be six weeks or maximum three months, and then they stop all of that, and then their gut should be healed uh, at the same time as following the elimination diet because you got to remove all the triggers because if, if you're eating something right. that's inflammatory, you're not going to fix, you know, even though we're doing a gut protocol, it's not going to, it's not going to work. So you do that, and then when the, we get all the all the other testing back, you know, I'll look at what the immune system is, do things to modulate the immune system. And then once we get somebody to where they're at a really good, you know, have restored their, you know, and their symptom score has gone down from 200 down to 25, then it's like, okay, now let's, um, let's take a look at what you're taking and start reducing that. And maybe you just need to take something twice a week or or something and maybe you're 60 years old like me I'm actually older than that but uh, you know they need for life digestive support you know because as you get older you're not you're not making as much digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid and so, so we kind of come up with a plan for long term maybe you have a genetic polymorphism that's affecting methylation and you you're just going to have to um, take long term methylation support right yeah well, that makes sense so uh, how many clients would you say follow up with you regularly or do they kind of get treated and then they are well enough to go on without you? So I encourage my clients to do, uh, I have what I call the four month plan. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, they get three and a half hours of consults face to face with me. And then, um, and then the email support through my EMR. So if they're at a place and they have questions and I answer emails every day to it, all of my clients. And um, so uh, at the end of those four months, usually they're in a place and most of them I don't ever hear from again because they're, they're, they're well or they're good, right? Amazing. Uh, occasionally I'll, you know, I get an email like, uh, and saying, oh, I fell off the wagon, I need to come see you again, or, you know, I just really like to repeat labs to see where I'm at, and, um, you know, I have a few clients that are <clears throat> more long-term, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they need more help. So, like, with a, a, an autoimmune client, I recommend that we repeat labs every so often. So after the four month period, you know, I, I give them kind of like a, you know, a, a maintenance. Okay, this is your maintenance. And when you have a flare, this is what I want you to do. This is like your, your emergency kit, 
So keep this on hand because, you know, you want to not ever have a flare because when you have a flare, you're making more t uh, antibodies to self tissue and then that can mm -hmm. cause like what we call epitope spreading and you never can, you, know, you may never get back to baseline. But occasionally people will have a flare and we want to minimize any kind of tissue yeah. damage. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, we can do testing every, you know, every few months, but I would say the majority of them are pretty happy and I don't hear from again. Um, sometimes they'll say, hey, you know, can I send my husband or I'm sending my, you know, that's usually what I hear is like, I sent five people to you <laughs> <laughs> or something. So they, they end up being my, my biggest referral source because people, results sell. Awesome. Okay. Results sell. Well, Dr. Clayton, I would like to thank you for sharing all these amazing pearls with us. And if you have just a couple more minutes, I'd like to ask some rapid fire questions. Okay, sure. Okay. So I think we talked about this a lot already. Advice for students interested in the holistic health model, but if you want to put a few more words. Are you talking about uh, pharmacy students, pharmacists? Yes, pharmacists that want to transition out and like the holistic model. What should they do? Um, I would look into getting real credentials. I mean, you, it depends. You know, there there are some some ways to get into it that don't require a degree. But if you can, you know, the the real credentials, the masters, getting a masters and doctorate and all of that, that holds a lot of weight with doctors as far as like referral source. Um, you know, you can do the IFM program, which is great. Uh, you can do the FDM program and then there's a, another one, um, functional med FMU, Functional Medicine University. Those are three uh, really decent um, uh, programs that you can go through go through and um, they all have different prices and different advantages and disadvantages. So I would look at those three programs to see um, what, what, what fits you best. But um, yeah, not everybody's going to, you know, I didn't set out to go <laughs> and get a master's and then a doctorate. I was just going to take one course at first. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I got to take some more because this is so great. But, and then I, I had no idea I would go for a doctorate until I actually was finishing my master's and I was like, should I? Okay, maybe I'll try one course. And then, <laughs> then I kind of just went through it. But there were so many advantages for my career wise to do the doctorate. And when I finished my master's, I just didn't feel like I had enough clients to mm -hmm. um, kind of keep me busy enough. So I kind of did it just to kind of keep busy, I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'll just do it. And I did. And I'm really glad I did because now, you know, there's something magical about that. You know, now I'm teaching and that's going to, that will give you me enough credibility to do what my initial vision was, was to teach doctors how to approach chronic illness differently. And if I do reach those goals, you know, teach, you know, I, I, I will be in front of doctors teaching them all of this wow. stuff. Awesome. You got hooked. You wanted I more. Did. <laughs> yeah, it's Great. a labor of love. It's not it's not all about the money. I mean, I'm I'm making, you know, at least what I made as a pharmacist and I'm working about uh, well, I don't know, you know, actually I work a lot, but you know, <laughs> but I'm uh it's not like I have to get in and go some, get up and go somewhere. My time is my own. And right. the reason why I'm so busy is because it, I create work for myself with all these other <laughs> projects. <laughs> well, like you said, it's a labor of love. So what's the number one thing listeners can do to improve their quality of life right now? Uh, to improve their quality. Of life. Well, do what I said, you know, air, water, and food, um, you know, there's a lot of sources on just clean up your diet, um, you know, eat at least five to seven servings of vegetables daily, take out all the sugar, diet, s sweeteners, all of that, try to buy organic when you can, um, 
and you know really healthy clean cut out all the processed food crap and mm. no no uh, eating at fast food just doing that and <clears throat> filtering your water and making sure you know like have take the carpets out of your house get get the uh, get air purifiers inside the house and um, making sure that you're living well and getting enough exercising and reducing the stress make do things um that that are stress you know incorporate stress reducing strategies and that will will go a long way yeah that's amazing what's a hobby or favorite pastime of yours um well you know i kind of like going to the gym you know i get up in the morning i have my my morning coffee and um get on the on online answer all my emails to my clients and look at my personal emails and log on to my course that I teach and see what's going on with that and then I go to the gym that's kind of my favorite time of the day and work out for at minimum a half an hour but I try to do it you know an hour and um and just get get going actually my favorite pastime is kind of hanging out with my friends and and um you know, I'm, I love to go eat, and, you know, <laughs> you know, I love to eat, so going out to great restaurants, and, you know, I also um, uh, like to dance. I took uh, country and western dance lessons for about three years until the studio flooded with Harvey, and, you know, and it's, they didn't have flood insurance, so it's trash, so, you know, but we still all kind of meet up at different places and, and, and go dancing, so that's kind of something I like to do for fun. I know. I love dancing myself. What's your favorite beverage to drink? Um, actually, I love my coffee. I, I, <laughs> I have my one to two cups of coffee black every morning. But, you know, most of the time I drink water. Um, I do have a coffee substitute that I drink in the afternoon. It tastes like coffee, but it's actually... Uh, uh, roasted dandelion root mm -hmm. it's called dandy blend, dandy you blend. Get, yeah <laughs> you can get it on amazon it's it's really great so i i try to drink just teas and water throughout the day yeah, yeah. awesome all right well dr gail clayton can you please tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you or learn more about your work um yeah you can go to my website it's it's easy to find drgailclayton.com and uh, browse around and um, I had a great website designer she has her little logo at the bottom of my page so if you're looking to hire somebody to do a website I highly recommend her she's really good and um, yeah so we're adding more and more to it uh, I'll probably be putting this podcast on my website as well because I have a little um, uh, I'm starting to do more and more of these types of interviews, so I have a section for that and a uh, uh, little Amazon store and all of that. So I, you can read a lot about about me, and I have some videos that I had done uh, on my website that you can can watch to learn more about how I how I work and and uh, what my background is and yeah. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you again so much for your time and for sharing all the wonderful, amazing things that you shared with us today. And have a wonderful week ahead. Okay. Thanks, Marina. All right. Bye now. Bye.